Satan Unbound. Is it possible that we're living during the times where Satan is loosed to deceive the nations? Having at least 1,000 years after being bound by God to perfectly perfect and craft his plan to deceive all of humanity besides a select few chosen by God. In this film, we will be diving headfirst into the rabbit hole, exploring certain topics that little to no one is willing to talk about or even knows about. And some of these topics will be projected in a different light that you most likely haven't heard before. Taking a closer look at what was really encoded in Shakespeare's work, fabricated history, ancient Egypt in the pyramids, the Rosicrucians, mystery religions, etc. Before we start, to tie all this together, we're gonna take a look at some scripture. Now wait, I know that's some of y'all's cue to click off, but hear me out. To those who don't believe, most of y'all see the Bible as a book of sacred numbers or a book describing astrology or for the more advanced a true anatomy book describing the things in our brain and laying out how they work and yes all that stuff can be found in the bible but where y'all go wrong is y'all think it's either a b c or d it's not a b c or d it's all of the above so when we say the bible most people automatically assume the notion we're talking about the KJV or some of the new sketchy versions. And many of us believers are well aware that the KJV may or may not have had its final occultic Rosicrucian encoded type edits by Francis Bacon before its finalization. So please don't try and generalize us and attack us as if we we're all just some type of KJV only cult. And no offense to any KJV only readers, I'm not saying any of those claims are 100% true, but it's just something you may want to look into and come to your own conclusion. That being said, the scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, and all that extra stuff are just layers of his handiwork. You see, God is not bound by time. And there are things in the Bible that we are just beginning to truly understand because God is willing to reveal them to those with eyes to see. But remember, none of that extra stuff matters if you choose to deny the immovable structure of truth set before the foundation of the world, which is in his son, Jesus Christ. Because when you do that, you start to see the more laughable theories such as Jesus was a mushroom, or Jesus was a collective hallucination, or even worse when they try and use falsified history to make theories such as he was the Egyptian kundalini liquid that rises up your spine and to your pineal gland, or the just as bad when they try and use the history that they tell us happened in the first century around 70 AD and make the theories like, oh, Jesus was just a Roman creation by Tacitus, Titus, and Nero and Josephus in them, without realizing that the chronology of the history they give us has been so heavily fabricated and rewritten, it's hard to tell if some of these historical plants even truly existed, and if they did, often not during the dates they give us. For a quick example, let's take a brief look at around 70 AD, Pompeii. What do we really know about Pompeii? According to the official historical narrative, in 79 AD, the ancient Roman city of Pompeii was completely buried under 13 to 20 feet of volcanic ash 
from the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. The ancient site was lost and abandoned, and their names and locations were forgotten. Pompeii was eventually finally rediscovered and excavated in 1748 by Spanish military engineer Roque Joaquin. But what if that narrative wasn't true at all? There actually seems to be a lot wrong with this mainstream narrative, and there's a lot of evidence pointing towards the destruction of Pompeii being a lot more recent than they tell us. Let's examine a few of these evidences. In 1514, Ambrogio Leone published the book Denola, containing Pompeii on a map still standing as a populated city. In 1570, Abraham Ortelius published the Regni Neapolitani, again showing Pompeii as an active city. In 1575, Antonio Laferri published the map of Italy, clearly depicting Pompeii well in standing, even showing cathedrals. In 1603, Philip Kluver published a map of Italy, showing Pompeii still not destroyed, but as a populated city. Besides the maps, we then have Mascalo's record of 1633. Giovanni Battista Mascalo lived from 1582 to 1656 and actually claimed to have witnessed the eruption of Mount Vesuvius and the true destruction of Pompeii, not in 79 AD, but in 1631. He then drew a before and after sketch of what the cities look like. He then claims in his book, Two of these fire flows were very quick. One of them vigorously ran down to Herculaneum. The other one ran to Pompeii. Another evidence of the supposed corruption of the historical event could be found in the excavated paintings that seem to be depicting pineapples. The significantly strange thing about this is that it was not possible for there to be pineapples in the first century Europe, which is when they claimed these paintings were drawn. Because according to the mainstream narrative, Pineapples are indigenous to South America, only being brought to Europe in the 1500s, meaning the painters would have had no idea about pineapples if they truly lived during that time. However, critics would debate that these are not pineapples, but are pine cones. That being said, it should be clear that the history of the early centuries of the world that they give us are extremely flip-flopped and fabricated and shouldn't be trusted. Personally, I'd go so far to say that anything they tell us before the Renaissance and the Age of Enlightenment Renaissance era should be taken very cautiously because from those times is when we start to see a shift of humanity from a more Christendom, Jesus-centered time all of a sudden to a more Roman, Greek, and occultic uprising. Dr. Anatoly Fomenko, whom is not just any professor, but the head of the math department in Moscow, Russia, who is well versed in dendrochronology, carbon dating, and world chronology, goes so far to say that all the Roman and Greek statues we see today are fabricated creations during the Renaissance era. He also sums up his theories by saying, almost all history they tell us before the 1600s have been widely falsified to suit the agendas of what we call Satan being unbound. It's no coincidence that when the world was mainly Christianized, the elite called it the Dark Ages and loved to bash it. But when the occultic ancient theological presence starts to become manifest, they praise this period and call it the Enlightenment area. And we'll be getting deeper into this later in the film. But with that being said, within all the fabricated history, Jesus remains stable. We don't need these historical plants that they give us to know that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. I've even seen shamans use the power of the name Jesus Christ to repel spirits, evil spirits, in the different realms during their ayahuasca ceremonies. Often, the biggest Christ deniers are the ones who never experienced or truly seeked his presence themselves and go off seeking spiritual fulfillment in other places.
with all that being said, we'll be going through a few scriptures that seem to be manifesting right before our eyes. Now bear with me through these because after we get through them and start getting into the meat of the video, you'll see how all this perfectly aligns with everything we see going on in the world today in a way you likely haven't heard before. We'll start off with Revelation 19. Alleluia. For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. In chapter 19 of Revelation, is where a lot of confusion starts to come in, especially when referring to certain denominations. You see, the Bible often uses this figurative, feminine, descriptive type marriage language. And this is often where the distortion of truth starts being fed to us as lies. Let's look at some similar verses to get a better understanding of this language. Ephesians 5 Verse 23 and 24 writes, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is also the head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Again, we have Revelation 12 verse 5. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. Again, Isaiah 54 verse 5. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, he shall be called. It's pretty clear that the woman symbolizes Israel or the body of Christ, or spiritual Israel, whom God adopted us through his son. But sometime in the history of Christendom, Satan started showing his presence, making all types of different doctrines, and especially infiltrating the Roman Catholic Church. They don't see it as the believers, but rather they teach that all nuns are mystically betrothed to Jesus in an actual marriage ceremony where a young woman dresses in white and makes a public vow to the church. And after this public profession, the young woman is told that she has become the bride of Christ and must consecrate herself until death. Was just consecrated as a bride of Christ. Um, more specifically, I was consecrated as a virgin living in the world. And she would make him a promise of our virginity as a gift back to him. So we, we become brides of Christ. Receive this veil by which you are to show that you have been chosen for other women to be dedicated to the service of. As you can see, totally corrupting a doctrine so simple. And they have a deep history of doing these types of things. When you actually start to research these different popes, you find out they secretly did some of the most wicked things that you could think of. And I'll be doing separate videos on some of these untalked about things that some of these popes did. For example, Cardinal Bonaventure, whom they also call a saint, created a complete parody of the Psalms by changing every time the word Lord or God was mentioned, he changed it to Our Lady. Another way they also inverted the whole bride situation was by placing a Jesus-like hierarchy on the Virgin Mary. 
The doctrine of the Immaculate Conception, or Sinless Perfect Mary, was proclaimed error-free or infallible by Pope Pius IX in the formal proclamation in 1854. We can often see how Satan shows his presence 